Well, good day. I don't think it's, it's just one minute past morning, so I'm going to call it day. And it's so good to have you here. What an amazing day in history this was. This was the day in his, that all of history was waiting for. And, uh, and we call it Good Friday. It is a day that, that Jesus paid the price that we really deserve to pay. He took it upon himself. And for that this morning, let's pray and thank him. And we'll be remembering that this morning in our service. Jesus, it's, uh, it's an amazing day when we think back on, on actually why you came. And, and Lord, how you, you came and you lived this life that, that we live, that you jumped into your very own creation. And that you lived this life of, to perfection, a life that we can't, we can't do that well at. But you set an example, you showed us the Father, and then, Lord, on this day in history, you showed us just how much God loves us. Yeah, come on. And so, Father, we just, we remember you. Jesus, we remember you this day. And while our hearts are saddened to think about what you have gone through, we are rejoicing in knowing that there's another day coming. We love you, Father. Thank you so much.
It is here, my hope is found here on holy ground. Here I bow down, here I bow down, here arms open wide, here you save my life, here I bow down, here I bow at the cross, at the cross where I surrender my life. I'm in There's a place where sin and shame are powerless. Yes. There my heart has peace with God and forgiveness. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. There all my ever found comes like a flood comes flowing down where all the love I've ever found comes like a flood comes flowing down so good. at the cross at the cross I surrender my life. I'm in all of you. I'm in all of you. Where your love ran red and my sin washed white. I'm in all of you. I owe to you, Jesus. Yes, God. Say that I owe all to you. I owe all to you, 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 Jesus. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> wow.
white as snow. Wow. Just invite you just to close your eyes and just meditate on the Lord. Just on the cross and the suffering on this Good Friday.
acquainted with my grief You're not just another high priest You have compassion for me Cause you have empathy and sympathy And you care for me and you fight for me oh, Upon that tree you are my peace You're strong for me Long suffering You have empathy And sympathy Cause you care for me And you fight for me Upon the tree You are my peace You're strong for me Long suffering You have empathy And you have sympathy And now you care for me Oh you fight for me Upon that tree You are my peace You're strong for me You know, maybe you're from uh, a church like uh, maybe a Lutheran background or Episcopalian, Anglican or uh, Catholic or Orthodox. Uh, this week uh, means so much to all of you. And for those who were raised evangelical, charismatic, etc. and so forth, um, not so much. Uh, perhaps perhaps uh, Good Friday and uh, Easter but the rest of it, we don't know a whole lot about. And so, just being able to travel a little bit back into time and to look at some of the traditions and to become acquainted with them has actually been good. It's, it's a good thing, actually. And we salute our brothers and sisters of 
of our different Christian uh, persuasions as they have been uh, methodically going through all this. So I have the hand mic, so if I kind of fade in and out, I'll try not to do that, okay? Um, anyway, um, I wanted to give us a little background for what we're doing. Um, if I could have a... a um, well, first of all, thank you, Pastor Don and Pastor Carl, wherever he is, and the other pastors and staff for Caitlin giving me great handouts so that you don't have to scribble notes too furiously. Uh, this is mainly to make me look... No, it's not to make me look good, but it's, it's for you to have something to take, take with you. I may not touch on all these because I teach for a living and so I have to have outlines, but I don't always adhere to them. That's me. I'm a bit spontaneous and yeah. um, extemporaneous and uh, exasperating and all those things. And so um, if, if there's a, um, a title to this message, it's Friday, What's So Good? What's So Good About It? And I, I thought of lots of different things. This is such a solemn time for so many of us. It's just a solemn time where our, our Savior went through what we would call His Passion. But I, I'm hoping that we can look at this a different way. And so please forgive me if you expected a reading of the Gospel account. Uh, for most of you who have ever been to a Good Friday service, that's what you do. And um, I put something on the back. Uh, for you to kind of like uh, look over with the with the gospel references, uh, so that you can read them on your own. Okay, but we're going to go over just a little bit of this together, and then I'm going to launch into what I believe I'm supposed to share today, and hopefully not get too heavy. You see, there's there's a lightness and a heaviness that goes with this day. And because it's hard to chew gum and walk at the same time emotionally for some of us, we find ourselves either wanting to be on one side or the other of it, right? Because that's our nat our, either how we were raised or our natural proclivities, you know? Whether we're Eeyores or Tiggers, um, you know? That's where we try to lie, lie into. So anyway, here we go. Since I don't have 50 minutes, I should launch into this. Um, so why, why the name good? Um, just to give you a quick, a quick little thing. Um, it may be because um, it's a mashup of the word of God's Friday, and it just became Good Friday. Uh, it's very possible that um, it's a transliteration of different different ideas uh, from uh, early church gatherings. Um, I think I left in your notes um, the idea that because it is a church day, a, a, a holy day, there's this um, notion that anything that is a celebration or a, a notable, um, a notable uh, feast for the church or, or a fast for the church, we call it good. And so it could be good, you know, the old um, Anglo-French or something like that. But um, anyway, it, it could be because of that. And so a lot of the church fathers really kind of um, struggled with this idea of why do we want to call it good when so many terrible things happen to our Lord and Savior. And, um, and so they settled on that, you know. And that's another reason why it tends to be on the church calendar, a very solemn thing. If you ever went, um, they don't have the, um, you know, if we lift up our hearts before the Lord, you know, we give Him thanks and praise, you know, when you during the Eucharist, and um, we don't say hallelujah at the end, you know, the, the, the priest would get, would give you the stink eye if you, if you said hallelujah at the end of it, because you're supposed to save that for Easter, because that's when He rises, and then that gives us permission maybe once a year to get happy for what Jesus did. And, um, and so uh, there's a natural solemnity that comes with this. And, and I totally understand that. So anyway, if you look on, on the back of your handout, it says uh, what happens on Friday. Well, first the overview. Sunday is Hosanna Day. It's Palm Sunday. Monday, clearing the temple. 
uh, Tuesday tests and challenges, you know, all of the setups from the scribes and Pharisees and the Sadducees. And then Wednesday, there's some ideas, but they don't really know for sure. And maybe he had to rest up because he was exhausted <laughs> from all of the stuff that was going on. And then, of course, Monday or the Last Supper, communion, feet washing, that sort of thing. Gethsemane, the Garden Passion, betrayal, and arrest. If any of you ever want to know why it's called Monday, um, I'll tell you, but I don't have the time. <laughs> uh, so, meanwhile, before the third hour, 9 a.m., Jesus endured the shame of false accusations, condemnation, mockery, beatings, and abandonment after midnight, after, after multiple unlawful trials, he is sentenced to death by crucifixion, and then, of course, one of the most horrible and disgraceful methods of capital punishment known at the time. Before Christ was led away, soldiers spit on him, tormented, mocked him, pierced him with a crown of thorns, and then it goes on. And the seven sayings of Jesus, and then about the ninth hour, 3 p.m., uh, Jesus breathed his last breath and died. And by 6 p.m. Friday evening, Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea took Jesus' body down from the cross and laid it in a tomb. All right, so those are the events of the day. And it sounds pretty, doesn't sound very good to me, does it? But let's look at some of the things that I have here. Um, the pairs, there are pairs of words that give purpose to Jesus' pain. And that would be another title. What gives Jesus purpose for his pain? And um, let's look at Isaiah. I'm going to, my main passage is Isaiah 53. We have it up here. Verse 5. But he was pierced through for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The chastening or chastisement for our well-being fell upon him. And by his scourging or by his stripes, we are healed. Um, the, in the Talmud, the, um, the Jewish uh, rabbis, the head rabbis, were trying to figure out what was this all about. They, they believed it was Messiah, but they didn't understand, um, like, how is this going to happen? And so, one of the things they thought about him, when it said that um, he was pierced through for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. They they thought that G, that the Messiah was like a leper. He was like a leper. He wasn't leprous. Messiah wouldn't have leprosy. That would make him unclean. But he would be like a leper. In other words, he would need cleanse. He would carry sins. He would carry weights that would make him appear to be unclean. And they, they just couldn't figure it out. It's hard for us to figure it out all that Jesus did for us. So let's look at some of the pairs of words and what they mean. Okay. Huh. Wrong page. Okay. Uh, the first pair is pierced through and transgressions. It's, uh, I'll try to pronounce it in the Hebrew and impress all of you. That's halal. And it means to profane, to defile, to pollute, to desecrate. And like I said, to be like a leper. To be someone who would be unclean. And that's what Jesus did for us. There's an uncleanness that comes to us. It's not necessarily... They didn't... Like the, like the rabbis who thought that Messiah wouldn't be physically uh, unclean. Um, isn't that what sin does? It makes us unclean to go before a holy God. And he uh, carried that uncleanness, that profaneness, that defilement. Um, you know, I remember listening to Jackie Pullinger, and she was speaking to someone saying that when Jesus died, he, he took our loneliness. Isn't that crazy? You know, we don't think of that as one of the big things, but loneliness is huge, right? He took our loneliness. And, and, and whatever it is, I mean, I'm looking around, I don't see any kids here. Well, I would count you not as kids. But he took every kind of defilement and uncleanness there was upon himself. 
And, and some of us, whether we've been uh, especially uh, unclean in our actions, our words, or had unclean things done to us, sometimes we don't even have those things happen to us, but we still feel unclean. And imagine what the Lord did by taking all of that so we wouldn't have to live with it. In other words, it's not required for you. You, do, you don't get any sort of um, journey badge that I carried my own weight and heaviness of uncleanness. You know, there's no extra attaboy at the end saying, for 50 years I carried it. No, he carried it so that we wouldn't have to. And then pesha, uh, transgression or rebellion. Have any of us rebelled? <laughs> or maybe not. I'm speaking to other people right now. <laughs> yes. Do you know there's a unity in rebellion? There actually is a unity in rebellion. It doesn't, it's, it's kind of like on a thread. But rebellion, have you ever been in a situation where, I've been in classrooms where people who have really had issues with, with authority and rebellion, sitting on opposite sides of the room, and by the end of the day, they find each other. Yeah. It's like one enchanted evil. You know, it's like, <laughs> there's, there's a magnetism in, of rebellion that draws people in. It's, it's kooky, but I've got to see it with my own eyes and, uh, and, and watch it happening. And it's a spirit mm -hmm. as well as an attitude. Mm -hmm. And the Lord dealt with that. He was crushed for our iniquities, okay? The, uh, by the way, um, it's, um, it's, it's, um, not a, it's not a K for that, huh? But um, that's my best I could do. The ha, break, break in pieces, to crush, to bruise, even to turn uh, blue like a bruise, it could mean that as well. So there's this element of what he did in his own body. There's a brokenness that happened to him, to break in pieces. Can you imagine to be crushed? But not one of his bones was broken. Isn't that wild? And then avun which is perversity, depravity, iniquity, guilt. There's more to it, but uh, just this idea that anything that can be twisted, right? It's kind, of a, it's kind of a popular thing to say, man, that's twisted, you know. In other words, to turn something on its head. But think of the way things should be, right? And then, and then tweak it so that it's dark. If any of you had seen Stranger Things, that was a Netflix series, where there's something called the upside down, where everything bad happens. It's kind of like a parallel universe of, of evil, you know, of alien life force. It's, it's kind of freaky. But it's like there's an upside down of where we're not supposed to live. Right? Okay. Um, chastening for our well-being is Muchar, which sounds like a character from Star Wars. But um, uh, it means discipline, chastening. Correction. Any of us like being corrected <laughs> much <laughs> or chastened? In other words, you know the word, um, it's funny, when I was in West Africa, they had um, uh, something called pigeon, not poo koo pigeon, but pigeon, like they have in Hawaii, except it's different. A mixture of country talk, English, and slang. And one of the words for sin in pigeon where I was, was done bad plenty. <laughs> Eat done bad plenty. Yes, I know, I sinned, yes. And I thought, well, that's pretty good. Mm. So, uh, yes, Caitlin can appreciate that. All right, and um, the well-being that's referred there is shalom. Shalom. We, it's kind of trendy to go shalom, you know, whatever. Sounds Jewish, sounds cool, sounds ancient. Jesus does a shalom thing to people. And, and the interesting thing about shalom is it means well-being. It, um, it means wholeness. It, it means nothing missing. Nothing missing. It means, yeah, nothing broken. Nothing lost. Complete. Brought back together. It's such an all-encompassing word, shalom. 
You know, when Jesus said, my peace I give to you, my peace I leave with you, it's not the world's peace. Uh, we used to practice because peace has a substance because it's Jesus. Mm. And I used to practice releasing peace to each other. You, you don't have to, I wouldn't mind having some fancy robes. That would be kind of cool. But, you know, I thought that only professional people who wore this certain kind of hat and stuff could say, you know, peace to you. You know, I've been in those churches. Some of you have as well. And, and I used to think, ah, come on. But, you know, it's true. You can release peace to people. In the craziness of life, he can speak peace like he did. Jesus is on the ship. Everyone's freaking out. Don't you, hey, Savior of the world, aren't you caring that we're going to die? Obviously, they didn't know him as Savior of the world at the time. And he gets up and he says, Shalom, to the, to the wind and the waves, and it was like glass. And it freaked the professional sailors out. It's like, that doesn't happen. So he could speak to nature, peace. should practice that sometime, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay, he did that for us. He, he took his disciplining, brings us shalom. Everything that we needed to pay for brings us peace. And then the fourth pair, scourging, we are healed. By his stripes, by his whipping, we are healed. Um, chuba it means to bruise, to stripe, to wound. And there's a lot of other words. It's not a very pleasant word. And um, that's what he took for us. And, and by that we are healed. It's kind of the opposites of God, right? If you want to receive, give. If you want to live, die. You know? Isn't that the wacky world of Jesus? But he does it with him. With his spirit inside of you, it actually changes everything. And so he says... By what I've taken, I'm going to release to you, Rafa, to heal, to make healthful, right? It's an interesting word. It says, if you look at my notes, it says, let's take a closer look at Rafa. In the Septuagint, which is the Greek translation of the Old Testament, which was put together... Um, a few hundred years before Jesus came along, it would have been the the Bible he may have read, um, or he would have been he would have known it. Uh, that word heal is used twenty nine times, and and if I'm blessed enough to be able to give a um, to to share on healing, I'll go into all of that. But one of those is, well, just think of. Um, when Jesus said to the, when he sent out the twelve, he gave them power to, to heal, you know. He said, that, you know, preach my kingdom and heal the sick. It's the same word. It's kind of cool. Um, that word, that word uh, Rafa is in Exodus 15.26 when the Lord reveals himself after he talks about all the blessings and cursings to the children of Israel going into the land of promises. As before they get in, oh, by the way, here's the things you need to do. You know, get this right, and this will happen. And he says, um, I am the Lord who heals you. Same word. Okay. So I want to sum it all up because don't have lots of time. And um, what is our response to this? You know, I mean, I could have told you more stories because I'm more of a storyteller and I prefer to do that. And so I was betwixt and between telling stories and, and giving, giving a Brandon type message, <laughs> you know, just so polished and together and everything. <laughs> and so wonderful. But I did, but you did get notes. Thank you back there. And so it's wonderful for this opportunity to share with you. And I thought to myself, what should be our response? And... I think, um, I think our response, look at this passage. Well, first of all, you know what? I'd like to read, I'd like to read that Isaiah passage in, um, in the uh, Passion Translation because sometimes I love changing it up. I love changing up passages uh, in different translations so you don't get... I learned all of my scriptures either in the NIV or in mainly in King James. And so 
that's what instantly comes to mind. But it's good to reread it in different translations so that you don't fall into the habit. Have you ever noticed sometimes at prayer time, it's kind of like who can go through the Lord's Prayer is faster? I don't know, amen. You know, it's like, wow, what was that? You know, so anyway, let's, let's read it from this, okay? Okay, the, the first passage was from the New American Standard. How about this one? But it was because of our rebellious deeds that he was pierced and because of our sins that he was crushed. The punishment that made us completely whole and in his wounding, we found our healing. That's kind of cool. It's good to just kind of like retweak it a little bit. So let's look at our last passage here. This is in, um, in Hebrews. And uh, we have that up there, Hebrews 12 too. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. And that, what I read from was from a slightly different translation, but yeah, that's the idea. And he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. It says, for the joy that was set before him. And that word joy, uh, it's, it's an interesting word. It, it actually means joy. And, um, and so it's like, what was that joy? Uh, that's us. We are the joy of God. It wasn't just the obedience. Obviously, to do, his, Jesus said, my meat or my food is to do the will of my Father who sent me. And that's what he did all the time. Um, but there was more to it. It was more than just strict obedience. Like, Jesus, you have a job. Okay, if I have to, because, you know, I trust you, Father. I'll go do the job. And get it done. Get her done. It was about the reward. And what was the reward? You and me. His family, his sons and daughters. For God so loved the world, right? Mm -hmm. Not the dirt, the treasure in the world. That's you and me. He loved us. And that's his joy. His joy was to have sons and daughters who would become mothers and fathers and would have sons and daughters. You know? Throughout the apex of time until the end. Mm -hmm. So let us fix our eyes on Jesus the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross. He endured it. He endured it. He went through it so that we wouldn't have to. And that was his joy. His joy wasn't, oh boy, I get to suffer. No. Oh boy, I get you. I get you for eternity. When someone says, the, well, the worst thing I could say to Cindy my wife, the amazing Mrs. West, as I say to my <laughs> students, um, is, I don't get you. That drives her crazy. Meaning I don't understand you. She says, use any other word, but do not say, I don't get you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, the Lord gets us. He gets us in that He understands us and He gets us as His prize for all eternity. And, and if we don't think we're understandable, you don't get it. Because he does. Mm. And, and mm. so I would say our sum up is this. Honor him by receiving mm. his complete work. That's good. Don't, there, it, there's no honor to God by holding back on receiving every good thing God has for you. There's no honor to God. Mm. If, if God has done something wonderful for you, but you're worried about boasting so you don't give your testimony, that doesn't honor God. If you're if you're concerned mm -hmm. that you haven't paid enough, you know you done you done bad plenty, <laughs> so you have to like live in a doghouse a few extra hours. That doesn't honor God. Mm. If you have an opportunity to be well, but somehow you you think you deserve what you got, that doesn't honor God. Mm. It's time to it's time to wake up. It's time to wake up. Easter has already happened, but it's coming, right? It's time to wake up Amen. and realize all the wonderful things He's done for us. And it's worth getting happy over, even on this terrible, <coughs> horrible, and very good Friday Amen. for all of us. Maybe bad for Him, but actually it was still a good day for Him because He gets us. 
right? And that's why we can say Good Friday. Come on. Does that sound good? Let's be believing believers. Seriously. You know? Yes. Abundant life. (laughs) Do you want this abundant life? No. Not what you're carrying. (laughs) Come on. So... I'm going to take a moment. I know I've just I've squeaked this to the very last moment, and I just want to say, let's let's receive from him right now. Is that okay? Yeah. So every eye open. <laughs> I I don't believe there's anyone here who doesn't know Jesus as Savior. So I'm not going to give that uh, invitation. Although if you don't, then you're certainly welcome to, because he paid for it. You might as well get in on this. He. He actually loves you and cares a lot for you. And and it's an adventure. And you begin by saying yes. Right? And then the other sides of it too, because salvation is much more than just, you know, getting our ticket stamped for heaven. It's his kingdom. Right? And that means all the amazing things he's won for us. So let's believe. Holy Spirit, I, I thank you for your word today. I thank you for this option uh, to say yes to you today. I thank you that it's <laughs> it really isn't an option. It's like take a million dollars or die. You know, okay, I'll take the million. And so, God, we take the million. We take life. We choose life in our bodies, in our souls, and in our spirits today. If anyone here is sick, if anyone here is is troubled, if anyone here has emotional pain, and don't leave here without having. Uh, your, your brothers and sisters or strangers here uh, believe with you to see Jesus lift you up and take that away. In Jesus' marvelous name. Amen. Amen. sacrifice of love.
to my soul. Your word is a lamp to my feet. Jesus, I love you. I love day. Father, we thank you for the love that you poured out on us on this day, that we could know you, that we could be your joy, that you gave everything for the joy that was before you, that you gave everything for us, that we would know you. We love you, Lord. You're amazing. Amen. Amen. And I want to invite all of you to invite somebody to come Sunday morning. We're going to have a lot of fun. And we are going to complete this story Sunday morning. Amen? Amen. 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 We will see you then. Bless you all.